Sector One. Back when it existed, to even mention that name outside of the company could get an employee fired, if the boss was feeling generous that day. It was all but a fable now, whispered amongst the staff like a ghost story. Sector One was the top secret area of the old Kaiba Corp where the worst of the worst the company ever conceived was created. Biological weapons, WMDs, Bombs capable of taking out entire continents, missiles capable of taking out the entire human race, you name it. If it pushed the boundaries of ethics, it was made in Sector 1. Seto's knowledge of the specifics was limited. Once, he'd asked Gozaburo what went on behind closed doors in Sector 1, and was met with a hand to his throat, and a threat to never mention that name again, or else... Once he'd taken over the company, Seto found he had little interest in dwelling on past affairs and had turned his attention to his vision for the future. Everything in Sector 1 was destroyed and all the documents pertaining to what went on in there were sealed and sent to a high security storage place across town, along with most of the old records. That was why neither Seto nor Noah could discover at the press of a button just what Lamia had been working on, but Noah explained this. She had been part of the mass layoffs Seto had brought about when he took control of Kaiba Corp. He essentially fired anyone who wasn't willing to drop the old vision of the company and go with the new direction. Something many swore would bite him in the ass one of these days, and something he never thought twice about. At some point in amongst all of this, Seto had picked up his pen and resumed tapping. It was a nervous habit he didn't realize he had, and one that his brothers had been too kind to point out. But the more times his pen hit the desk, the more concerned Noah grew. Maybe it's nothing. Maybe she wasn't working on anything that bad. It doesn't matter what she was working on. What matters is that she lied about it. What will you do? Will you ask her about it? Yes. But not in front of Mokuba. He doesn't need this. Noah immediately understood. And before Seto headed out the door for a meeting, he promised not to say a word to Mokuba. I hope you don't think it's too girly. Not at all. But are you sure you want to give this to me? I mean, she was your sister. But she was your mother. And it's only right that you should have something of her to keep with you. I don't even remember her. Or dad. Not clearly. I try to, but the older I get, the harder it becomes. Every time I try to recall anything about them, all I can see is Seto. Is... is that bad? Of course not. If anything, it's to be expected. You were only very little when they died. But surely your brother remembers them well enough to tell you about them, no? I don't know. Seto doesn't talk about our parents, ever, or the past as a general rule. Surely he would if you asked him to. I'd rather not push it. Seto isn't the kind of person who likes to look back on things. He seems like he doesn't care about anything, but he actually cares more than anybody I know. I think that thinking about back then causes him too much pain, and the very last thing I want to do is hurt him. You're a great kid, Mokuba. (sighs) Seto's lucky to have you. (laughs) It's the other way around. I love Mom and Dad, but like you said, I was too young when they died. Seto's been the only parent I've ever really known. I know he's not the most pleasant person all the time, but he's given up a lot to raise me. And I know he'd do absolutely anything for me. Seto listened to the entire conversation from behind the closed door. Indecision weighed upon him. It was very possible that Lamia was a dangerous person. But it was then he realized how attached Mokuba had grown to her, even in such a short time. Taking her out of the picture altogether would break his heart. Could he break up their relationship on a gut feeling and a crumb of information? The answer was a straight up yes, until Seto heard what Mokuba had to say next. The truth is, Auntie, that I know I should feel robbed or something. I mean, it's sad what happened to Mom and Dad. And it's sad that I had to grow up without them. I should feel envious that other kids my age have normal parents and normal lives, and I don't. But I mean, 
I'm way luckier than those kids in a lot of other ways, you know. It'd be great if Mom and Dad could still be around, and I miss them every day. But despite that, I'm happy. I have my brothers, and now I have you. I've got more than enough love in my life. <sighs> Human error. This should be simple enough. Pull Lamia aside and ask what he needed to, and if he didn't like her answer, which he knew he almost certainly wouldn't, all he had to do then was point her to the door. Sure, Mokaba would be cut, but he'd get over it eventually. But what if he didn't? Was it worth potentially risking his safety so as not to sacrifice his happiness? If Seto dropped Lamia from their lives, Mokaba would be devastated. But if he let her stay, there was a chance he could be at some kind of risk. Seto decided then and there that the wisest thing to do would be to collect more information. He resolved to go the very next day to the archives where everything concerning Sector 1 was kept. But not before sending out a silent fuck you to whatever celestial being that decided parenting should be so damn difficult. <laughs>